Some would say this fence is a complete waste of money and useless. I mean, look at it. It's 30 feet long and anyone can just walk around either end. However, it's very easy to make, so let's hurry up and start the tutorial before the cops come back. I'll first show you how I make the fence using steel wire, then after we finish the wire version, I'll show you some easy tips and techniques for making a styrene version of the same fence. The main structure of the fence is made using 18 gauge galvanized steel wire, however you're not limited to this wire only. Just make sure the wire you do end up choosing can be soldered. The wire needs to be as straight as we can get it. To help straighten the wire, I attach one end to the bench with a clamp and with a fair bit of force pull the wire from the opposite end using some pliers. This will stretch the wire slightly and get it very close to being straight. Whatever curve remains in the wire can be carefully straightened by hand. Next we need to select an appropriate height and length for each section of the fence. For this fence I've decided to make each vertical post 3.7 centimetres tall, which equates to about 3.2 metres tall in HO scale. However, I cut at least one post an extra 10 millimetres longer. This longer post will make installing the completed section of fence on the layout much easier. As for length, I cut each horizontal post 3.7 centimetres long as well. After cutting, you'll likely have a burr on the end of each piece of wire. This is simply removed by filing it away. Depending on how accurately you cut each piece of wire, some may be ever so slightly shorter or longer than 3.7 millimeters. Instead of filing each post so they are all perfect, I just lay all the horizontal posts down and pair each post with another that is as close as possible to the exact same length. Doing this will help keep the fence square across the entire length, especially if you're making a longer fence. Depending on the wire you use, there may be a very subtle flat edge that you can see here. If that's the case, when it comes to bending each of the vertical posts for the barbed wire, be sure to bend away from the flat spot. This will make laying and soldering the fence and gluing the nylon tool much easier. I bend the top 6 millimeters of each post. Next I draw a template on a piece of MDF with a ruler to ensure that when I begin laying and soldering my fence that I'm making it nice and straight. Each piece of wire is placed into position and held using a piece of blue tack. The same stuff used to stick posters onto your wall. Keep working your way along the fence and somewhere in the middle add the long vertical post. Soldering the fence is pretty straightforward. I'm using lead solder, so I'm very careful to avoid breathing in the fumes. I first add the flux, and then with the soldering iron set to high, I begin soldering, carefully working my way along the fence. Once finished, I remove the blue tack, and with a small file, I begin filing away the excess solder. I do my best to get right into the corners of the fence, however remember to be careful when filing because it's very easy to apply too much pressure and break the solder, but don't worry if it breaks because you can easily add more solder to fix the fence. Now for the main transformation, adding the nylon tool. This is the same stuff used on wedding veils. It comes in a variety of different grades, so try to find the grade that best suits your scale. Cut enough to cover the fence. If you look down the length of the piece you cut, you'll see a pattern and some straight lines. I use my ruler to carefully line up and cut along one of those straight lines, ensuring there's still enough nylon to cover the fence. To glue the nylon to the fence, I use standard super glue. This one is handy because it has a brush built into the lid. Start by applying very light dabs of glue on each post intersection, then as carefully and accurately as you can, lower the frame onto the nylon, 
Lining up the straight edge, we just cut on the nylon with the top of the frame of the fence. You only get one shot at this, it basically sticks straight away. So you want to be sure it's straight before lowering the frame onto the nylon. Otherwise, you'll need to pull the nylon off the frame and cut a new piece of nylon and try again. To prevent the glue adhering to the mat, I gently move the fence as the glue sets. It only takes about 15 to 20 seconds. The rest of the fence can be glued down by painting additional super glue along each post. Just try not to over apply the glue because it may end up filling the small holes in the nylon. To ensure a good bond as the glue dries, I weigh down the nylon with some small weights. Then just use a sharp blade to cut away the excess nylon. The barbed wire effect is made using some 32 gauge jewellery wire. Cut a suitable length of wire and double it over. Then twist the two ends together and place one end into a drill and the other one on a piece of dowel. Now run the drill and the wire will twist around itself creating a braided effect. As long as you don't bend it as you cut the wire free from the drill, it should be very straight. Cut three lengths long enough to go across the top of your fence. Then using super glue, glue each length to the top of the fence. I'm using a gel super glue this time because it's a little thicker and sets fast. It can be a little tricky, but if you take your time, it will work. I glue one post at a time because I've found I can be more accurate that way. I start with the top piece first, then the bottom, and finally I glue the middle piece. Mounting the fence is very easy, even in wood, because we've made the extra long post. To mount in wood, just drill a hole big enough for the post to fit in and set the fence in place. The fence looks quite good as it is now, however, you do have the option of painting it as I'll demonstrate. The colour I've chosen is Winter Grey from Rust-Oleum, and with the fence mounted in the wooden board, it makes painting very easy. It only needs a very light coat because we don't want to accidentally fill in the small holes in the fence. Additionally, due to the paint being a gloss paint, I added a light spray of dull coat to take away that glossy appearance. Installing the fence into plaster or foam is even easier. Using a file or something similar, bore a hole for the long mounting post to fit and simply press or glue into place for a more permanent fix. Now for the styrene version. I use 0.8mm styrene rod and using the chopper I cut all the vertical and horizontal posts I need. Using the chopper makes this job extremely easy and fast, not to mention accurate. All the posts are exactly the same length. If you're interested in buying a chopper similar to the one I'm using, be sure to check out micromark.com. They sell a wide range of tools and equipment for the model maker and hobbyists, and to get a 10% discount on any purchases exclusive to my viewers, type the promo code BOULDER when at the checkout. You can use it for anything you buy from micromark.com. Just like with the wire fence, I draw a template on the wooden board. However, instead of using blue tack to hold the fence frame in place, I first tear a piece of baking paper big enough to cover the template. Then using spray adhesive, I coat the board and place the baking paper over the top. Again with the spray, I now spray the baking paper very lightly with the spray adhesive. 
you'll only need a very small amount of spray, don't overdo it. Now simply place the frame of the fence down on top of the template following the straight lines. The spray adhesive will hold everything in place and once everything is set out in position, apply the plastic cement into all the styrene joints. Make sure you allow the styrene and glue to fully set before trying to pull the fence free from the template. I left mine overnight. The rest from here is basically the same. Cut and glue the nylon tool to fit over the frame, fix the barbed wire to the top of the fence, paint the fence and set it into position on your layout. One major downside to making the fence from styrene as you all see is it's very fragile. You need to be very careful when handling the fence. However, just like the wire fence, if it does break, it's quite simple to fix, either with more plastic cement or super glue. Also, it's more difficult to angle the top of the fence where the barbed wire attaches. So on this type of fence, I prefer to just leave the top straight. Also, don't forget to check out my Patreon page if you'd like to help support these videos. I have a few perks for patrons and everyone who donates will get to view my videos 24 hours prior to them going public, which gives you a chance to get in first with your questions. Cheers and thanks for watching.